Adam. <laughs> I wish that was relevant enough to stay in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Tables, Lists, and Chairs. This is TLC. Welcome back for another episode. If it's your first time here, here's what happens. Each of us have come up with a top 10 list of a certain category, and we're going to reveal our answers at the same time, and we're going to laugh and point fun at each other. Point fun? Yeah, point we're fun. Gonna, we're going to make fun. No, I'm, point I'm, I'm going to point fun. Point and laugh and make fun of each other's picks. Also, if it's your first time here, why not subscribe to the channel? Like the video. Do a comment of your top 10 list. This week, we are doing the 10 worst AEW pay-per-view matches of all time. Right. So, I really struggled with last week's one because I got a short list of 25 and had to whittle it down to 10. Yeah. On this one, I got... Four, mm -hmm. then managed to get it to seven, and then struggled to fill out my top ten. Um, shall we start with number ten? Three, two, one. Okay. 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 Yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah. fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt really bad. I didn't want to put that on my list. Yeah. yeah. I struggled with the same thing because I was like, ah, it's not really a match. It's more just an angle to get the belt off of somebody. But they also really mess up the spot in mm -hmm. the match where they like take the turnbuckle off or whatever. So at that point, I was like, it is just bad though. That's and it so hurts because I love both of these wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Same. They're fantastic, as seen by another match they had on pay per view that won't be appearing on this list. Speaking of the same show, it's not a great show for this because this one again is a bit harsh, but I have reasons for it because the match itself is throwaway. It's like less than a minute, right? Jade Cargill and Chris Statlin where Statlin wins the TBS title. Felt like a really anticlimactic way to cap off Jade's like undefeated stri streak in AEW. Yeah. It felt like it was building up to a lot more than someone coming in. And a weird way for a baby face to win as well, to come in after another match that Cargill's already had to just beat her and then be like, I won now. I mean, it's cool that Statlin, it's like the right winner. I think Statlin very well could have dethroned Jade Cargill, but like this, I was like, eh, it's not great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was on, yeah, there's a potential to go on my list. Yeah. But I went with Ali versus Brandy Rose from Fight for the Fall in 2019. Mm. It's two minutes. It's, it's a nothing match, but they, it's two minutes and they managed to f up everything they tried. <laughs> it was bad, though. Like, I didn't include it because I didn't know whether to include Fight for the Fallen and Fighter Fest it and stuff. View. It was, but it was like that kind of in between zone. So I didn't, but I understand its inclusion. Mm. Man, they really showed, like, they promoted this match as, like, Brandy was crying in her promos about not being able to make it as a figure skater and going through things that she'd gone through. And then this was her match to really prove everything. And then she went out and she was just a heel. And I was like, well, this is it's weird. not right. I yeah. think Brandy Rhodes had one of the worst runs in AEW history. Agreed. I don't think she got anything good and got nothing right. Three. Two, one. Ah, oh. oh. Rebecca Big Swall, the dentist match. Yep. Yeah. And then I had the one that you had last time. I agree. It was a real shame because I think both of these are amazing and I could have more. I know there's an injury involved with it, but the stuff that happened was bad. So, sorry. Yeah. It's why, I, it's why I can include it on the list. Yeah. Like it's. I, I think it was circumstances. You're right. Like they, they're bollocks up the spot as well. But yeah. I mean, the circumstances makes it worse. Yeah. Is the circumstances don't help, Rob. Yes. And you've got Kargilana J. This one was a weird one because it was kind of like the peak of, well, Jade's having a match on pay-per-view. She's not losing that, mm -hmm. you know? And there were a number of them around this time where it was just Jade against, you know, Ty Conti or mm -hmm. Ty Mello. And then Jade versus Anna J. And it's like, well, she's not going to lose the title. So it's kind of like maybe a waste of time. But this one was especially difficult because they'd had a match on Rampage earlier in the year that was baller mm -hmm. that blew everybody away i was like i couldn't expect two people as inexperienced as they were to have a match as good as they had and it blew everyone away and then they ran it back at double or nothing and it was just nothing i know it was the pandemic mm -hmm. and i know we gave a lot of leeway to pandemic stuff but i think we with the benefit of hindsight cinematic matches were mostly bad yes yeah and i think this was a bad one I think at the time I was like, eh, it's fine. I think looking back at it now, no, it was just bad. Mm -hmm. It was just, we, we didn't know what to do with wrestling. So we tried wacky stuff. It turns out the wacky stuff was just a bit <laughs> And this was just a bit Three, two, one. Oh, 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 o
I've got like the same answer as you, but one away each yeah. time. Yeah, that doesn't count. Yeah, I know, but almost a match. Not quite. No. Um, yeah, this one, like you said, it was just a bit like disappointing. It was just Jade Cargo retains. Yeah. And there you go. All Out 2022 was a real... 2021. 2021. Are you dumb? It was there to fill time. Mm-hmm. Uh, QT Marshall has argued about this match far too much, and that has made it worse. I was there at the Dynamite show when they shot this match, like shot the angle for this match, mm -hmm. and I was just sitting there like, I don't want to see this. You know, I get what its purpose was. This is like everything from here I do think is like, these are the bad matches. These are the ones I actively dislike. Whereas this, it's like, it's fine. It's a little short Delia Bob where you can just do it and bring the crowd down before the main event and mm -hmm. everything that's about to happen. It's fine. But when I look at All Out 2021, best pay-per-view I've ever seen, it's always like, why is this match here? Mm -hmm. It was both too short and too long. Three, two, one. Ooh. Ooh. Good shout. Okay. Yeah. 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 I guess you're, that's not on my list. But that's a very good shout. It's not mine either. Yeah. It's difficult though, because I think up until the finish, yes. the match is quite good. Yeah. But they do the finish to sacrifice the match. Exactly, it I, kills the match. I think the match is just, it's a, a bunch of stuff happens, and it's now when you watch it back, you're like, oh, none of this means anything. Mm -hmm. Because you're just waiting for the devil to come out and just win. Yep. And it's like, huh, what was the point of any of the spots then? Yeah. It's a, I think it's a bit like the, the Money in the Bank that Brock wins. Mm -hmm. Like, sure. no one remembers any of the spots in that match. They just remember that Brock wins. Yeah. No one remembers that Claudio Castagnoli's in this match. They just remember that the devil wins. Yeah. And it was not very... And the crowd goes deathly silent. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it doesn't have a payoff until the end. Yeah. Like, that's it. A good match should build to the finish and have things that happen in the match be paid off with the finish. Mm -hmm. And this is, like, the complete opposite of that. Yeah, that's exactly it. I get the Athena one. This is the only one, like this is the start here, where these matches pissed me off. Mm -hmm. Because to this point, we had had no interesting Jade Cargill pay-per-view matches. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it was like the Anna Jay match and stuff like that. And this was the first time I was like, oh, I think that's an actual challenger for her. Mm -hmm. Someone who comes in, had debuted just a few months earlier, comes in and is, you know, a star elsewhere. So should be able to come in and give Jade a run for her money. It's like four minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you missed the whole match because you were out getting pizza. That's true. I was. And that like, there just wasn't anything to this. And it felt so reductive to not give Jade a good match, to not give Athena anything, and then just end it. Mm -hmm. Like who benefited from this match? This one for me is real emblematic of the, the bad times for the TNT title. All of this stuff and all the, the stuff involved in here with like Paige Van Zant wrestling and all that stuff. It just took up so much TV time and like it led to this. And it's like, oh, this is it's not worth it, gang. This experiment just didn't work. And I know that some people were massive fans of like the, the characters and stuff like that going into it. I was one of He's them. He's one of them. Uh -huh. But I think the payoff to all of it was bad. It was a bad match and it made people look worse. Three, two, one. Uh, BBC and many of the other. Th sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the match you just. Yeah, had. yeah, yeah. ATT. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you wrote PVC and Men of the Year. And I was like, oh, it's American Topsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was specifically Paige Van Zandt and Men of the Year. Sure. Who yeah, I think Jorge we're... Masvidal wasn't there. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, like, look. I like Dan Lambert. I thought Dan yeah. Lambert was excellent television. I, I thought gonna, Dan when, Lambert was a wonderful heel character. When I was talking about it, I was going to call him Jeremy Lambert, and I'm like, <laughs> nope, that's a different person. <laughs> He's a nice guy. Yeah. Dan Lambert, I thought, was a great on-screen character. It didn't lead to any good matches, though. No. Nah. Because I, I nearly had American Top Team versus Inner Circle. Mm. It's also not that great. Yeah. Uh, well, I've already should have been should have been better. I liked some of the TV, but it led to bad stuff. This is one of the bad things it led to. Who remembers this match? <laughs> Me. Yeah. Um. It was a bit boring, wasn't it? It was just a throwaway five minute nothing. And this was what follow up, by the way. One year after Cody versus Dustin. Woohoo, Dustin, <laughs> my boy. 
Uh, this was kind of put, and it was like right at the start of like pandemic wrestling, and it just didn't need to be there. We didn't know what we were doing. No, it was just, I mean, what's this on here for, you know? Exact same reason as my last one. Mm -hmm. This match did nothing for nobody. Mm -hmm. Like Powerhouse Hobbs didn't come out of this looking especially great, even mm -hmm. though he won a pay-per-view match in less than five minutes. And this was kind of like the blood feud of the summer, the breakup of Team Taz and everything. And it just led to this and Ricky Starks just gets pinned in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Everybody was kind of ready for Ricky Starks to be this guy. And he just loses his pay-per-view match in five minutes. And everyone just goes, what? Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? And then he just wins the lights out match like less than a month later. And then I'm really like, I have no idea why you made this decision, especially considering his progression over the next few months to yep. facing MJF. Should have won this match, did nothing for nobody, pissed me off. Three, two, one. Yay! Yay! There, it is. there it is. We are always so close. We're like one off the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this one really annoyed me. Yeah, really irritated me. It's why I yeah. had it higher because it's, it's they actively pissed me off. Yeah. Even if you're gonna have Hobbs win, and we thought that we were getting the Ricky Starks push, and maybe we're not. Maybe this is the time for Powerhouse Hobbs. Maybe they're gonna push him from here. Then, then they just didn't. I was like, well, if you're gonna commit to one, commit to one. And then they didn't. The problem with this match is that All Out 2022 is a show of excess. Mm -hmm. And it had too many matches on it. And because it had too many matches on it, time has to get cut somewhere. And this is one of those matches where time just gets cut. So you have this big blood feud going in. It's supposed to be this big deal. Oh, well, sh there's 14 other matches on the card. Mm -hmm. You guys get five minutes. Yep. And you can't do much with five minutes. Yep. There's a dirty joke in there somewhere. <laughs> I completely agree, mm -hmm. hence its placement on my list. <sighs> yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is there to say? Like, <laughs> I've had the chance to talk to Anthony Agogo about this match. Mm -hmm. He's a real nice guy. Like, he knows what it was and everything. And I asked him, like, why do you think they went with the America versus UK thing? Because I've always looked at it as like, like maybe just trying to make excuses for it, but. I'm looking at it like, okay, it's his first pay-per-view program, you know? So maybe you go with like a cliche storyline because it's a little bit easier for a mm -hmm. rookie, you know? Just go out there and salt America, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And he's so charismatic. He's such a good talker that I really see no reason to have gone this direction mm -hmm. other than just to give Cody Rhodes a reason to be the American dream mm -hmm. for a day. And that felt like all this kind of was. This match felt incredibly self-indulgent. Yeah. And it didn't help that it came at the end of maybe AEW's worst story. Maybe. I think it's so. Up there. It's up there. Yeah. And also, Cody wins with like his fourth finisher. He wins with the Vertebraker. Okay, <laughs> I, that should be a finisher, but you never win with that. So mm -hmm. when it comes out of nowhere in a pay-per-view match, everyone's like, huh, all right. Three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All, all, all valid. Good answers, I think. Yeah. Listen, the <laughs> pandemic was a bad time. It was. Yeah, it really was. This was a bad feud mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. This match is so f stupid. Mm -hmm. One of them tries to use just a drill on the other. Mm -hmm. Attempted murder. Yep. And then they win the match by gassing someone unconscious. Look, we, we needed to find things to do. Yeah. We didn't know what wrestling was. And you know what? This wouldn't be on my list if Twitter didn't go, this has to be on the pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to be a buy-in deal and it would have been a fine little YouTube commercial and you can have some fun and whatever. But this is the opening match of a pay-per-view and it's awful. Uh, we've already spoken a little bit about this one. This did not need to be here at all. You don't need a cool off match. Just have like a promo or something. Have a little bit of time between the two matches. You don't need a match that's this. No one wanted this. This was bad and pointless. This annoyed me. Stop it. Hey, remember when Sabu was in <laughs> AEW? <laughs> For like 10 seconds yeah. too. Yeah. He, he came out to be involved in a match. And then they got to that match. He did one spot and was never seen again. What a waste of everyone's time. And then they had a f***ing rubbish match. This match is, it's Adam Cole and Chris Jericho. And they thought to themselves, huh, can we have worst match of the year contender? And they looked at each other and said, 
I think we can. Mm. If we really try hard enough, I, that's the only way I could figure out how they had the terrible match that they had. Three, two, one. Hey! hey! There we go. Well, well, <laughs> well. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah right. well. Look, the pandemic was rough. <laughs> So, fun fact about this match, when I was writing up my best matches, mm -hmm. I went through every AEW card, yep. and I saw this match written down, and I turned to Tempest, and I was like, do you f remember Dustin Rhodes versus Sean Spears happening on pay-per-view? And he went, yeah, it's the match where his, his pants gets pulled down, and he's got Tully's face in it, and I was like, I've blocked all of this from my mind, and it all came flooding back to me, and I was like, yeah, we didn't know what wrestling was in the early days of the pandemic, mm -hmm. and I sure as sh weren't this yeah i have a lot of thoughts about this i love adam cole mm, he does, me too. yeah he yeah doesn't. he's awesome he is fantastic lovely man mm -hmm. i wish he would stop getting injured because i want him on my tv screen same that being said i don't think plunder matches are his strong point I think very often his worst matches are the ones with just some kooky whether it's this one, didn't particularly like the Orange Cassidy one, didn't like the two out of three falls, uh, uh, three stages of hell match with Johnny Gargano and NXT, etc. This match was so annoying from start to finish because you had Sabu and a bunch of spots and then you had a finish that Chris Jericho had done 15 years earlier against Shawn Michaels at Unforgiven 2008 and they didn't like that finish then because it makes no sense to end an unsanctioned match with a referee stoppage. Uh, my thoughts in this match are lol Sabu. <laughs> Sabu was in AEW. <laughs> Sabu was in this match. Three, two, one. Yeah, it's more matching. Very good. That's fair. Yeah. He's got Tully Blanchard's face on his dick. Yep. Why sure does, does he have that? Like, why was that on paper? Why was yeah. it on pay-per-view? Why was that on pay-per-view? Pay-per-view. You know, it was the pandemic. They didn't really know what they were doing. It felt like a good portion of the roster just like wasn't available for mm -hmm. things. And this was something they decided to put on pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. And it was bad. Yep. And it was stupid. Mm -hmm. And this is where you can finally tell that they've given up on Sean Spears as a top guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. Uh, I, I have thoughts on this one, if you don't mind, Luke. Sorry. Please go. This match really pissed me off. Not for the America versus UK thing, although that was bad. For me... They've been building up Anthony Ogogo on TV, been putting over that gut punch. That gut punch was the thing. He's going to bang, and then, he, you know, people just couldn't continue after gut punch. It's like, oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting way to, like, build a build a finisher, build a spot. That's great. He hits it on Cody Rhodes in this match, and Cody went, all right, and then just carried on. Why? Why? What was the point in building it all up? For just for, for the adversity, for Cody to just overcome all the odds like he always does? This is peak Homelander Cody, and this was bad. Why didn't you have a go-go win? If you're going to build a star, build a star. Don't just build someone for Cody to beat. This was bad. Have you ever tried to punch America in the gut? I know, right? America just gets back up. Mm, so you can't true. hit America in no gut. You said this was peak Homelander. Yeah. This is the start of Homelander Cody. Yeah. I think this is literally like you can put a pin in this and be like, this is when he came out in the jacket. And I was like, <laughs> Homelander. Homelander. And this is the downfall of Cody Rhodes in AEW. All roads lead to WWE. This is the starting block of mm -hmm. all roads leading back to WWE because this is when the fans started to turn against him. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Yeah. yeah. Sad yeah. matching. Yeah. Yeah. You got the wrong show, stupid. Did I? Yeah, so it's all out. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> we match anyway. Yeah. I mean, in fairness, they did have nothing but bad matches, so it could have happened there <laughs> as well. Could have happened here as well. No, that was Stadium Stampede. <laughs> this is a cursed feud. Yeah. And this is a match that should not have continued, and it should not have gone on as long as it did. The company should be ashamed of themselves for letting it go on. It is a black mark mm -hmm. in the company's history books. This is bad, bad, and all out bad. Yep. Yeah. It's somewhat tough because I know why it continued. And it's because they built it up on TV that if Matt lost, he had to retire. Mm -hmm. So what happens when the guy who has put his career on the line gets shoot hurt with a very bad mm -hmm. head injury? Mm -hmm. 
I call, don't you, think you do what they did. You call the match off. You call the match off mm -hmm. and bring them back, and yeah. people will understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happened in this match is pretty unforgivable, yeah. and that's really all there is to it. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a bad match because mm -hmm. all it is is a guy gets pushed off a forklift, whacks his head, Ugh. and then they go right to the finish. Yeah. But it's like, it's but the most uncomfortable. Yeah. 20 it's, minutes of a pay-per-view. It's not even that they just go to the finish. They do another big spot mm -hmm. yeah. of like people falling off, climbing up, and yeah. doing other shit. It shouldn't have. Once he hit that floor, and Aubrey's trying to call this thing up, being like, hey, you're done. Yeah. Dude, you are done. And Matt's just trying to get up, and he's falling down, and Aubrey's like, nope, we are not continuing it. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, ah, the match is going on. Yeah. I have no idea how this happened. Yeah. I, you guys covered it all. This should not have carried on. It's, I think, the the hardest match to go back and watch. You know, we have the, the entire pandemic wrestling, and that's rough to watch for a di completely different reason. This match, you go back, I, I can't watch it anymore. Can't. It's awful. Never, never carried on from when it happened. So that was our list of our 10 least favorite worst AEW pay-per-view matches of all time. Are there any that we missed out? Let us know in the comments of any matches you would have put on your top 10 list. I was surprised that the exploding barbed wire death match. I knew it wasn't going to be in, in Tempest, and I knew it wasn't going to be in mine. It was number 11. And if you want to see next week's episode of TLC, head on over to patreon.com forward slash WrestleTalk, where I'm going to be joined by Dan Layton and Laurie Blake, and we're going to be talking about the 10 best Survivor Series matches ever. And it's going to be a good one. I'm real excited. So you can watch that episode right now over on our Patreon page, uh, patreon.com forward slash WrestleTalk, and it'll be live on YouTube this time next week as well. Thank you so much for watching. If it's your first time here, please do subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Why not share it around with your friends? And we shall see you next week. Thank you, Tempest. Thank you, Luke. And jam that jam. Cheers. And cheers. <laughs> okay. Best, best, best matches, Laurie. Yep. Oh. Best matches. Best matches. Do you know why? This one has paid my bills for years now. <laughs> <laughs> this one has been paying my bills for years. I highly well, thought Yeah, whenever you need to do make up a list or have something to say, just mm -hmm. think about the Montreal Screwjob. Yep. Sorts you out every single time.